Hey guys, in today's episode, we have a new update coming tomorrow with a new card, two new game modes, and a trade token rework. All that and more in today's episode of Clash World. Hey guys, Legend Ray here, and welcome back to another episode of Clash World. In this weekly show, we take a look at the most recent announcements from the Clash Royale team, the hottest topics in CR Esports, as well as what's going on in the community. Then, we'll finish off the episode by breaking down the meta and featuring my off-meta deck of the week. If you're enjoying Clash Worlds, then please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified of every new video that comes out. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the first section, New in the Arena. New in the arena is where we find out about what the Supercell team has been up to this past week. Obviously, today is a day of hype because, as you may or may not know, the January update should be coming out tomorrow on the 28th. I am super duper excited. Although it isn't really considered that big of an update, this seemingly small quality of life update actually has so many insanely great features packed into it. Now I'm sure you've all seen the update videos on YouTube already, so I'm just going to go over this stuff as quickly as possible and tell you everything that you need to know. First off, we have a new arena, Spooky Town, and it's unlocked at 3600 trophies. I mean, just look at the arena. The aesthetics are absolutely stunning. This change also comes with some arena shuffling. Different arenas now have slightly different trophy amounts required, and also different cards will now be unlocked at a few different arenas. In addition, if you're above 4,000 trophies, chests will contain more cards and gold, which will definitely improve free-to-play progression. Next up, we have two new game modes. As some of you may or may not know, the Lunar New Year is coming up, and this year is going to be the Year of the Hog. So, to celebrate that, there's going to be a Year of the Hog game mode that should be coming with this update. Basically, there will just be hogs spawning in the arena every 12 seconds or so, with the amount of hogs spawning increasing as you go further into the match, up to 3 hogs at double elixir time. The second game mode is a global tournament mode, a mini collection tournament. This is basically a mode similar to War Day in Clan Wars, where everyone has their own pool of 40 cards where they try to make the best deck using them. I'm definitely looking forward to these modes as both of them seem really interesting to play with. And of course, we have the new card, the Wall Breaker. This card is a 3 elixir epic unlocked in training camp, so newer players will have access to it. It's basically two building targeting fire spirits that actually deal 400 damage if it reaches the tower. Fortunately, it is kind of weak, so you should be able to take them out pretty easily. I personally don't see it being that meta, but as usual, who knows with these new cards? Let me know what you think about this new card in the comments section below. Next up, we also have a trade token rework. When trading, you'll now be able to select up to 4 cards to give away when making a trade offer. This makes it much easier for your clanmates to find a trade that benefits both of you without as much negotiation. Private Tournament Change Private tournaments will now have the ability to include a max losses option, similar to that of a global tournament. In addition, if you create a private tournament, it will automatically be shared to the clan. Now that's pretty much all the changes in the update. Keep in mind that it again is a smaller update. There should also be a much bigger update coming in around March. In addition, balances should be coming next week, so we have that to look forward to as well. Be sure to comment what you think about the update in the comments section below. Now that's going to do it for new in the arena, it's time to check out the esports update. The Esports Update is a segment where we take a look at the new and rising pro players as well as recent esports competitions. This week, Team Fnatic and EE hosted a new esports tournament, the EE Mobile Series, and the grand prize? A spot on the Clash Royale team for Team Fnatic. After an entire day of battling, the champion was decided. Thunderstruck. Can't wait to see him tear up in CRL Season 2. Now that we're caught up with the most recent esports news, let's check out the rising rumors. With the new update just around the corner, let's take a look at some features the community wants to see. Redditor Boli Bolito has some pretty interesting suggestions for the game. Let's take a look. Crown Chest from every 24 to every 12 hours. The Crown Chest is one of the biggest and most constant flow of cards given that you are active enough. Making the Crown Chest appear twice as often gives more rewards for those players who grind more than others and can also help those who start out the game progress a little bit faster into the mid game. More info to clan leaders. 
Clans are a feature that can definitely be developed further at the moment. Leaders and co-leaders, in my opinion, should have the ability to see not just donations, but also other stats such as last online time or last time the person participated in war, so that the leaders can be more informed about the members of their clan. Global tournaments. Here this guy has two suggestions. The first one is to make a separate global tournament for lower level players, maybe capped at something such as level 6 and max at level 9. This allows for more people to participate in this pretty great feature, and I think it's a great way to introduce newer players to a tournament cap as well. The second suggestion is to make bonus rewards cheaper. Now this one I don't really agree with, especially considering that a legendary chest itself is already 500 gems, but hey, you know what? I'm not complaining if they're gonna make it cheaper. Well, those are all some pretty solid ideas. Be sure to let me know what you thought of them in the comments section below. Now that we've covered the trending topics in the community, let's go ahead and break down the meta. This week's meta is dominated by mainly three archetypes, three musketeers, P.E.K.K.A. Control, and Freeze. Although Three Musketeers has indeed seen a slight decrease in usage, it's still one of the most popular archetypes to use both on a tournament standard and on ladder. Freeze, I think, is also somewhat of a problem in this meta. Despite that small nerf, if you could call it that, it's still seen pretty much everywhere, in Graveyard, Hog, Balloon, and even in some Three Musketeer and Control decks. Its versatility is just so high, and I honestly think it deserves another nerf in February. So that's the meta for you guys, and now let's check out the off-meta deck of the week. That's right, in each classroom episode, I'm going to be featuring one off-meta deck that works in the current meta. This week's deck was submitted by David Weimer, and it's a Royal Recruits Battle Ram Spam deck. This deck works quite similarly to a control deck. You want to play more defensively with your recruits, hunter, and archers, and then counter push with that battle ram. Flying Machine and Dark Goblin provide so much value and can give your opponents a really tough time, and the recruits also give the deck some aspect of double lane pressure. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get right into a battle. Alright, so hopping into a battle against a Chinese player here, so uh, good luck to him. And starting off this match, again like I said, we want to play this deck more like a control deck. That means that you generally want to wait for your opponent to make the first move. So here, uh, we're going to see if he does anything, and uh, if not, I might as well just cycle a zap on his tower, but because I am recording a video and I do want to get this battle going. So here he's going to go with that Mega Minion in the back. Of course, I can just go ahead and follow up with a Flying Machine, see what he does does and uh, oh he's just gonna go ahead and fireball that out oh he misses the tower actually so um yeah, not exactly the best plan his part uh but anyways we're gonna go ahead and split archers which will go ahead and finish that off and oh he's gonna go with a goblin hut so let's actually go with a battle ram in the opposite lane try and get that to connect onto the tower and here he goes with a valkyrie and uh, maybe can i connect on the tower and boom connection onto the tower that's definitely really really good for us and uh, he's got a Valkyrie down. We'll just go ahead and use our Dark, dark Goblin to take that out. And uh, let's see, he's going to go ahead and log that out. So... Uh, let's see here. I think Valkyrie might get a hit onto our tower. Unfortunately, it does. We're just gonna go ahead and cycle a zap onto that goblin hut and uh, see exactly. Oh no, he has double spawners. That ah, oh my god. Okay. That's going to be really difficult for us to break through, but hopefully we are able to take advantage of the fact that he did place that hut in the back, so, you know, maybe we're able to break through uh, with this battle ram push right here, but anyways, we're going to go archers to finish that stuff off, and oh no, the spawner's are actually doing so much work onto our tower, so here we're going to go with the battle ram in the opposite lane, and uh, see exactly what he has, he has that dark goblin, oh wow, that is really, really smart placement right there, I can't fireball that uh, with the tower, so uh, this guy definitely knows what he's doing with this annoying spawner deck, and he has a pretty decent lead as well so um we're definitely going to have an uphill game going into double extra time so here we're gonna go with world recruits in the back two on the side of the two barbarians because obviously we want more recruits on the side that we're going for and um yeah, let's just see what he's got. Let's go with a flying machine in the center, and uh, let's see. Hopefully, that can go ahead and get some value. He's going to go ahead and just fireball out that stuff right there, and we're just going to go ahead and go with some archers. Once again, split to go ahead and take out that Valkyrie, as well as that Barbarian Hut. Here, we're going to go with a Hunter and a Battle Ram right here. That'll go ahead and push onto the tower, and let's go with the Dark Goblin as well. Finish off those Barbarians. Stop them from connecting onto the tower, and here, come on, can we get those Barbarians onto the tower? Barbarian gets a swing and two swings onto that tower, so you know what? We'll 
will take it, but no, his Barbarian gets another swing onto our tower. This is actually so annoying. And uh, yeah, 22 seconds left. Let's go ahead and just split row recruits in the back once again. And uh, okay, he's got a second Barbarian hut down, guys. This is not good. How are we supposed to break through with our Battle Ram? Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead right here. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do? Oh, he has a Lightning as well. How many spells does he have? Oh, this is definitely a spawner spell cycle deck. This is not good. Uh, let's go with the Dark Goblin here. Try and snipe that Barbarian hut. He's going to log it out. Uh, but uh, fortunately, the guards will finish it off. Let's go ahead and get a quick zap right there. Finish off the Valkyrie and stuff. And there we go. Barbarian Hut goes down. So let's actually go in for a Battle Ram. We do have to go all in at this point. Oh, no, that Mega Minion. We have to take out that Mega Minion. Mega Minion is actually going to get hit onto our tower. Two hits. Oh, no. This is bad. We're going to go all in. We have to go all in at this point. Really, there's no point in trying to defend. He has the spells to take our tower down. Flying Machine is actually going to connect onto the tower. Let's go go into the Fireball. Tower's down 531. 330. Oh, no. Okay, this is really really bad right here uh, we definitely are gonna have to tank that mega minion and uh, let's see this is okay we have to go all in if we don't go all in we're pretty much screwed let's go in with that battle ram and that flying machine we have to chow right through that barbarian hut as fast as we possibly can oh god he used the lightning on the tower that tower is down to fireball and arrows range so let's go quickly zap that all and there we go grabbing the tower right before our tower was about to fall gg right there as you can see as long as we kept up that pressure we stopped him from being able to successfully spell cycle us out so there we go guys that was the off meta deck of the week i definitely recommend you guys give this deck a try it's really really fun and the royal recruits are honestly just a really fun card to play if you want to submit your own deck to be featured feel free to leave it in the comment section below but unfortunately guys that's all i've got time for in today's video if you enjoyed please leave a like down below as well as a subscription to my channel and as always this is legendary and i'm signing off see you guys next time